And I'm not trying to say that we don't have a problem with child trafficking in this country. Oh, not the child trafficking, just human trafficking in this country. We, ex- we, we most wholeheartedly do. And it has nothing to do with any illegal immigrants because Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks. I mean, let's can we can we get on the topic of like what the hell is going on in, in uh Congress? I mean, so th- today's episode, I want to get about get on, you know, how to rich are buying America. Like how they how are they exactly buying America? And we can really touch on what happened earlier this week or whenever you, you know, see this this podcast episode or this 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 you this video itself. Like Congress actually passed, the House actually passed a bill to uh, pretty much ban TikTok or it's a so-called get it under control. But it's like, why do you really care so much? And this is the thing I care about when I'm, I'm giving my rants on social media, because I actually work in the tech industry. And y'all hear me say it all the time. I get tired of saying it sometimes, too, but I do say it all the time. I work in the tech industry. So when people start telling me about some of the things that's taking place when it comes to like apps or data breaches and things that are like of that nature or just conspiracy theories, not because we do have data breaches that take place, they want to talk about these apps, especially when it comes to TikTok and how it's being the Chinese government is uh, taking our data and I'm like using it for what? And like that's the argument I always make. It's like what what do you what do you think they're actually using it for? I'm like what they learning about new dance moves? They're learning about new recipes coming out or protests that's taking place over here in the U.S. of A. So I'm like, there's not necessarily protests taking place over in China where they could actually do something about it and go and arrest the protests. These are protests taking place over here in the great states of USA and maybe in some other countries on top of it too. But primarily here within the US, that's where they want to have a control at. So I'm like, so what are you what kind of data are you worried about a foreign government getting from you that they could actually use against US or use against you as an individual? Because I'm like, that's not even how any of this stuff works. I'm like, if you're so concerned about that, then why aren't you concerned about other apps that's actually using your data to manipulate you when it comes to, you know, what you're seeing when it comes time to select a candidate to vote with hashtag Facebook or Meta. And what they got sued for and actually revealed that it was giving out the data for and how they was manipulating stuff and, and feeding people into, you know, uh, the hate and stuff that's coming out on social media. And it's like, it's not just, you know, that particular app in itself. So it's like, why do you care so much about TikTok? And I'm like, OK, and this is just my theory behind it. They have other corporations that want to see them get taken down. Primarily because like Meta itself has admitted that they want to, they don't like to to compete against somebody, especially somebody that's not even in this country. So they want to lobby as much as they can, which is why, you know, the rich are buying America, lobby as much as they can in other groups to do, go through this whole disinformation campaign to try to get TikTok removed, which is why you can see a lot of the things, the features they just rolled out, they not just rolled out, the features they rolled out in Instagram, other things actually mimic what's already been available for TikTok. And I mean, Google has done the same thing too. So I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to just throw shots at, at Meta. I'm going to say the same thing about Google. Google. But then you look at why do we care so much about that? Not even just that alone, because I mean, APIC, APAC has actually invested and has a say so in wanting to get rid of uh, TikTok because of people that's protesting what, you know, the Israeli government is doing to the Palestinians over there. And now what they're going to be doing to the Lebanese people. So it's like, and they have a skin in the game too, because in a lot of the, the people in the, uh, the elected officials, they are actually being <laughs> a lot of money coming from APEC is going towards the elected officials, which is why you don't hear them talk about anything that's taking place in Palestine. Because I mean, I've had one one of my people that I'm cool with, and this is actually one of the guy I ran up against, Hank Johnson, and she was like, "Well, you know, Hank is fine because he signed a ceasefire back in December." I was like, "Man, I don't give a great recovery about you signing no ceasefire." I'm like, "You're not saying anything against it." Hell, you're not even really showing up necessarily even speaking against this t- stuff taking place in your own district. But I'm like, just because you signed a document means nothing at all. That's just to, just to, just to appease the voters, which is a problem I have when we start talking about elected officials and what they're doing, just to appease voters. So I'm like, so you worried about that little bit? But I'm like, a ceasefire hasn't even taken place. He signed a document, and Biden already clearly is, is saying now he don't. Well, he now he's saying he wants a ceasefire because people have shown him that you know they don't give a crap about. Uh, him losing an election and they don't give a crap about 45 winning back again because he's allowing so many people lives to be lost and that's the whole fear monger that's come out of the party itself but to get back to our elected officials you know just because you signed a ceasefire means nothing because we can clearly see that you're receiving a ton of money coming from APEC and those same people are some of the same ones that signed to have TikTok banned because I'm like why would you care these elected officials like why would you care about what's happening with uh, this app like why is it such an issue to you and I mean because it's doing nothing for you 
is helping out people in your district because people have small businesses and is allowing them to be able to utilize and grow their small businesses on, on, on TikTok. Because I have purchased things from people that have a small business on TikTok. So I'm like, so you now you have to really drill down into who's really controlling stuff. So you can think about from like the, the glistening skyline of New York to like the tech hubs of Silicon Valley. I mean, the, the shadow is just around all of these companies. And it's not just, you know, landing on companies under acquisition. It's like the very fabric of like our American dream of how we build stuff out. But, you know, somehow in some way, when you're building something out, you become corrupt. I don't know why that happens or why that take place. But we have the rich now are just they're the ones living the American dream. And they're the ones buying everything up, allowing us as middle class people or people that's trying to get to where they are keeping a foot on our neck to try to keep us from getting to that place and in doing so they're using their buying power to buy politicians so that's why i really want to premise the first part of this episode off of what happened with tiktok and them trying to ban it because 45 wanted to ban it and now all of a sudden he don't want to ban it because now they want to invest in his people that has a 15 percent stake into tiktok itself or is what is it, uh bite dance whatever the, the corporate company is they're investing in 45's campaign and now 45 is saying no leave them where they are so i'm like oh it all it all just drills down to money like it's really that's the nature of everything is rich we need to really get money out of politics so let's put all those things into perspective so the top one percent they now hold a staggering 38.7 trillion of the nation's wealth i mean this this divide has not just you know widened it's become a chasm it's a growing exponential it's been growing exponentially over the past few decades and what's really driving that that unprecedented concentration of wealth is just them being greedy and we've heard this before in all progressive platforms and from the champion of it all mr bernie sanders himself but i'm curious as to why a lot of people do not pay attention to it like it, it baffles me why, you know, the starch Republicans don't pay attention to it and yet wonder why they themselves aren't getting ahead in society. And they don't want to blame the Dems or whoever's in charge or the, the, the far left uh, Democrats or progressives when locally the states are controlled. Some of the states are controlled by Republicans, independent like, of where you live at. Like here in Georgia, like I was arguing one guy online because he was like, well, you know, and he lives with, like where I'm at. I'm out in the country area. He lives in the country area. And he's out here saying that, you know, due to uh, Biden's economics, you know, it's causing so much problems here within the state of Georgia and it's allowing so many of these illegals coming into this country and it's affecting, it's affecting. And I was like, dude, dude, you, you realize that you live in a red state. I'm like, Biden, what Biden does federally doesn't necessarily come all the way down to where we are within this country area. I was like, this state is a Republican state. I'm like, the House and the Senate here are controlled by Republicans. So I was like, so if you got any beef with anybody going with anything going on locally within your state, it's not Biden, the federal person. I'm like, you got to be looking at your Republicans here. But I'm like, you're so blinded by this rage of what Democrats, are, so-called Democrats are doing. Now you, you want to blame little issues here on the states when you need to be talking to your local elected officials and that's the issue i have when i when i start talking about people in general i'm like you're so mad but you're not out canvassing you're not out trying to help other individuals run for office and pull your resources together to help them win and that way it'll help you all out <laughs> in the issues that you see taking place so let's consider <laughs> but i mean and then the other thing i have a problem with it too is Let's look at like the real estate empire. Let's look at what's taking place within like the housing market itself. So if you didn't know, generally what happens in the housing market is investors will come in and as people lose their homes, I mean, it is bad, but it's still as people lose their homes, investors will come in and seize up those foreclosed homes from off of like the capital steps when they actually put them up for auction. And then once they put them up for auction or they're buying from the banks, which is simply do buying from the banks, then they're just repurposing them and they'll flip them out. And that's how investors been making a ton of money. That's how the Chinese government has invested in our, con our, our country, too, within our real estate market has made a ton of money. So so when we're talking about considering the landscapes and the skylines of our city, it's increasingly owned by the ultra rich. Like it's hard to really now invest in property nowadays because you look at the median cost of a house. Now it's starting off at like three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollars. According to Harvard University study, their 2023 report shows that in order for a household to afford the median home, a family needs to make $117,100 a year. 
Okay, so you have to make 117 k to afford the median price home in the US, right? But that's the thing, what's the US median household income right now? It's about $75,000 a year. And, then, and our income has not even seen an increase to even be able to pay for houses like that. You gotta literally have, like both people in the house has to be working and they have to have really good jobs to be able to not only pay for the house, but afford the house and then afford a quality of life that comes along with, with that. So you got, you know, from the luxury condos that pierce the sky, the, the clouds to our historic estates and stuff. And even entire neighborhoods of rich are staking their claims in all of them. They're seizing them all up and they're declaring it for themselves and they turn around and they're renting them out and or they're trying to flip it at an even higher price. So what does that mean for the average American? It means that it's harder for you to even get it. That whole American dream, because this is how you talk about generational wealth, where you have a house, you end up paying a house off. And so your kids or your grandkids, particularly your kids, if you have any kids or you have, you know, family members you want to donate it to. Once you pass away, they can then turn around and if they don't want to keep it, they can sell it. And then take that the money they make from selling the house and they can invest it towards a business or paying down like debts that they may potentially have or student loan debts that we all generally have because mine are going with me to the grave there <laughs> there if they don't get forgiven they are truly going with me to the doggone grave so it makes it harder for you all as american people and me too to actually come up so now we want to look at like this whole the corporate takeover when it comes to this so we've talked about you know the them lobbying and them owning and own, owning and owning and, and how it's dividing between the rich and the middle class and how the top one percent holds 38.7 trillion dollars of the money here within the great us of a if not more but that was due to like last year's numbers that came out to the real estate empires and how they've been buying like all the property and stuff. But I mean, because you all see it, you see the new development coming up and how they're starting off at 400. And before you can even get into the neighborhood, half the lots in there have been sold. And then they have other neighborhoods now that's brand new neighborhoods that are no longer being sold to become, it's like a whole rental neighborhood. Like every property in there is like a rental property because an investor has come in and purchased all that stuff up. So you have to ask yourself, well, if they're investing over here, and you know got people investing over here well where am i supposed to get in at if i'm if i'm just trying to buy me a starter home like i'm i'm fresh out of school i'm, I'm fresh to start in the family uh we saved up enough i want to come out of an apartments where do i get a starter home good question because it's not like it used to be like my first house for it was like 3400 33 3400 square feet and i paid one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for it that house nowadays i bought that back in 2001 that house nowadays would be worth almost five. It would be a half a million dollars to get that house. I had a media room and everything in it. It would be 500. It would be a half a million dollars to get that, that house, if not even more, because it sat on a half an acre lot on top of it, too. So I'm like, we don't have things like that anymore. The houses you see nowadays, that's not even as big as that are going for almost a mil. And I get that in certain states, like in California. I mean, I don't, I don't like it over there either. But that was just a norm, not where I'm at in Georgia, like in the southeast region, because a lot of people used to come from those states to come down here to grow and and be able to use their grow their money. So now you, it's hard for you to even do that. So then you want to talk about, okay, well, we know all these things. They want to get rid of TikTok. What are they doing to control everything? So now you want to talk about. We're talking about the corporate takeover. So beyond this whole glittering towers and and uh, serene estates, it lies in even greater domain in corporate America. A handful of billionaires will the influence over the media to influence everything, all the media that we consume, the services that we depend on, and even the food that we eat. Because I mean, you have Jeff Bezos who owns the Washington Post. You have Glenn Taylor that owns the Star Tribune. You have Patrick Soon Xiong, who owns the Los Angeles Times. You have Sheldon Elderson, who owns the Las Vegas Review Journal. <laughs> and I mean, it's you can go on and on and on. And now you ask yourself, like, why is it important? Because it goes to show you, like, you hear TYT talk about it sometimes. And even though you're not, a, if you might not be a TYT, a progressive, you know, network fan, the stuff they say is kind of true. It's not well, it's not kind of true. It is true because. If these media com companies, they the billionaires control the media companies, then they can feed out what they want you to hear, which is why you don't see a lot of people talking about 
the, the, the genocide has taken place in the Congolese with the Congolese people. You don't see a lot of them talking about what's taking place with um, the Muslims over there in, in China. You don't, I mean, you don't even sit here and really talk a lot about what's taking place in Palestine. So it's like, and it's because it's on purpose because they have investors that invest in their company and they're not going to do anything to piss off their board and to piss off the people that invest in the company itself. And so it, and then it persuades you. Cause like I just said early on with Facebook, Facebook was part of that problem where it fed you all these conspiracy theory stuff. And it fit into the, the now MAGA people to help them believe all this Pizzagate and everything else that was out. And I'm not trying to say that we don't have a problem with child trafficking in this country. Oh, well, not child trafficking, just human trafficking in this country. We, ex we we most wholeheartedly do. And it has nothing to do with any illegal immigrants because if it was such a concern, let's, if it was such a concern, you would have more elected officials trying to tackle it and they would be speaking about it on the campaign trail, especially here in the state of Georgia, where it has actually picked up over the course of the years. But I do believe that some of these election officials play a part in it, which is why you seen the whole Epstein thing came out. And nobody, they didn't really want to talk about it. Only they want to talk about was 45's name being on there, which I mean, I kind of figured out anyway, dude's a perv. So I, mean, I, I knew his name was going to be over there. But if they control all of the media companies, they themselves can now manipulate you to make you want to go out and spend more. Make you feel as though that we are doing better and it's somehow your fault. And you and you go, go to believe that you're doing something wrong when you have everything and anything pitted against you. I mean, because we minorities have saw it for how long? But now <laughs> other Americans, real old Americans, they're starting to feel that pressure too. Because like I said earlier, you could it used to be where you can go out to, you know, rural areas, like real rural areas and be able to stretch your money out a little longer. You can't do that anymore. Like you really can't do that anymore. Gas prices out here are extremely high. The home sales, home prices out here are, are already yet within the region. They're still there at 400,000 plus. And I'm like, and even just, it's just so to even get to a good job, they don't even have good sustainable, you know, jobs out here to where it can pay for like your living expenses out here. You have to actually commute to get to those places. Like if I had to commute into my office, I work remote, but if I had to commute into my office, it's an hour and 15 minutes away from where I am. And so, and that's during peak time when I hardly any traffic. So if there was traffic that now hour and 15 now becomes an hour 45 to almost an, to, to almost two hours. Cause I've had days where it took me like two to two and a half hours to come on because of rain going on, potential accidents have taken place or construction. And it's like, who really wants to sit in four hours worth of traffic a day just to, to go to work? So your whole day has just been sucked up. You get up, get dressed, take you an hour and 15 to get into work, another two hours in the afternoon. You spent nine hours in the office. Your whole day is practically gone. So when you get home, the only thing you've not got enough energy to do is if you got kids, make sure your kids got your homework and stuff done, feed them, you know, talk with them, get some quality time talking to them, get them ready for bed. And then how, if you're going to have time for yourself, I don't know where the hell you're going to find it, but you got to find it because you can't, you're not going to get rich working for somebody else. So you got to make some time out for yourself. So it's like you, that whole American dream is just gone. But these media companies want you to believe that we're doing so great and opportunities exist, but they don't exist to where it actually people are paying livable wages. It don't. Because we've seen how many corporations now lay so many people off. So now when you talk about they have the media power. So you went from your real estate to talking about um, how uh, can, they can have so much wealth. Now it plays into your political power play. So the power, the power of wealth doesn't just stop at the marketplace. It extends to the very halls and powers of, of Congress itself and to the Capitol through substantial donations, lobbying efforts, and strategic think tanks, the ultra wealth they have a voice that echoes far louder than the average American. And how does that shape the policies that affect us all? Like they will have you believe just because they receive huge donations, it doesn't sway their votes. But if you look at their voting records, you can clearly see that it does determine how they're, they're positioning things when it comes to policies and stuff that's coming out. Like why are they voting on TikTok? But they're not doing anything about the cost of living in this country. They're not doing anything to make sure that they lock in rates for people when it comes to development, that people aren't out here price gouging, price gouging when it comes to like food and stuff. Because we've seen like fast food industries and in, in regular like uh, food industries, they've increased the cost of goods when they've had record profits. And nobody wants to put a regulation on that because they're lobbying and they're giving their money to those elected officials. 
So now you can't even really, you as an average American, only thing you can do is you can voice your opinion online. But it really is like how far they're going to go. And then some of these elected officials don't even have town halls for you to even come to their town halls and voice your opinion to them. And some of them just don't even care. I mean, because if they cared, they wouldn't be doing this. But you're concerned about TikTok. When we have healthcare that's extremely expensive, there is nothing affordable about healthcare. Healthcare is expensive as hell. And then you want to talk about we have, uh, uh, like I said, a housing crisis that's going on. Then you're talking about student loan debt because the whole thing was right. Go to school, get your education, get you a good job, and you should be able to survive off of that. That's not even the case anymore. You talk about high food prices. You want to talk about homelessness. You want to talk about our vets. I mean, it's, it can go on and on and on, but somehow they're concerned about TikTok and our data being leaked over to the Chinese government. So now let's get on the social impact of all of that. So the consequences of this accumulation of wealth and power ripple across society as a whole. From skyrocketing housing prices, which I was just talking about, to widening disparities in the health and education, just talking about the dreams of middle class stability seems increasingly out of reach, which it desperately is out of reach. So how that fabric of society is, is, is helping to reshape things now, because now I think people need to start building communes. Now, what I mean by commune, I mean like you and your family members, like all of y'all need to pull y'all resources together. People that you cool with, because you really got to be cool with these people. And everybody needs to invest in some land, hire them a builder, and just build your house. Like get you a loan and just build your, build up your property that way. Everybody can take care of it themselves. It'll be a lot cheaper. And I promise you, it'll be a lot cheaper doing it there. More so than trying to uh, buy it the regular way. And you get stuck with an HOA, don't necessarily care about you. They're trying to get that money. Don't really be, be doing anything in the neighborhoods. They're just trying to get that money. And But that's the plan for me and my family. Like, that's the that's the ultimate plan for us is to get the commune. And then, you know, my kids, when I leave this realm, my kids can do whatever they want to do with it. They can decide to live on it. They can decide to turn it into farms. They can put up a solar farm. I don't care what they do with it. it it'd be left to them to where I can invest it back to them and they can live on it with their family. I don't I don't care. I mean, but it is really to help my family out and to get us away from this whole thing of stuff is just continuing to go up. And it's like I said, it's my final destination. Like once I do that and I, I want everybody to do that, I want everybody to come together with their family, getting them some land, man. Y'all can live together, like live together in peace, grow your own crops and stuff. Get your own little watering system. Like uh, what's the guy that, that has the humidity uh, water system that, that I talked about on one of my shows? You have to go back and look at it. But it converts the humidity from the air into actual drinking, clean, drinkable water. So that's my, you know, that that concludes everything I want to talk about. Because it's like, as the rich buy more of America, the essence of an American dream is pretty much under renegotiation right now. Like <laughs> they really are renegotiating what this whole American dream thing is. But this is just not a story of acquisition or influence. It's just really just a call to action. Like I mean, we really got to get out, get involved. And we got to show up to the polls and vote these people out. Like, I mean, I, at the end of the day, we got to vote them out. And I mean, even if you got to write in somebody's name uh, and get whoever that person is, we have to vote these people out because they don't care about you. They don't care about the future of, of this economy. They only care about themselves. They only care about the power that they have. And they only care about, you know, what their future is going to look like. So my thing is get out, get involved. And then, you know, just get active. But I really want to talk about this today because it's not something that you haven't heard before. Like if you hear any progressive platform is you've heard all this before and how the rich owns the majority, the top 1% own the majority of America. Like I said, Bernie has been talking about it since he's been in office and Bernie is old as hell. I just really want to get on it today because what just happened with TikTok and then how we treating some of the other companies out there. And then what IRS is doing with like some of these uh, mobile app payment systems where they got to report up if you made anything over six hundred dollars. So, you know, the whole gig thing, they're trying to tackle that and get rid of it. So y'all stay safe. If you find this extra episode interesting, please like it, subscribe to the channel. I'm growing. I'm at over 7,000. I'm like steadily been hanging around 7,300 <laughs> and haven't grown <laughs> since then. But go back and check out some of my previous episodes. Come talk to me during my streams. I stream every Monday and Wednesday unless I have something going on. I did have something going on this past whenever you see this. Uh, I had something going on one Monday because I had doing some uh, work down in the country area at our country houses. 
And I just, my body was just done. I couldn't get out in the stream. But yeah, I stream every Monday and Wednesday, trying to make a time to stream for on TikTok throughout the week sometimes too. So, but yeah, guarantee every Monday, Wednesday on YouTube and on Twitch. So make sure y'all tune in for that. But again, if you find this helpful, you like any of my stuff, you value any of my content, subscribe to the channel. At least you could do subscribe to the channel. You can, you know, I want you to like it. I want you to like it. Leave a comment. I mean, let's talk more about it. And then, you know, like I said, we can, I even pull you into a stream so you can t- come into the Discord because don't join the Discord family. And we can talk about it live and like, let me get your opinion on it. Let me see how you feel because I am one of those people that actually get out and I do participate in the political process. If you've heard me on my introduction, what I've talked about before, I get out, I'm an activist. I do actually get out canvas and knock on people's doors and, and let them know about things that's affecting them in the community. And then of course I, I ran for office. So I do understand the whole political game, which I will not participate in again. I do want to start, my goal is to start a lobbying firm. And the lobbying firm is really to push to help people out because at the end of the day, these politicians, the only thing they understand is money. And if you got the money, I, to me, they pretty much will pass any bill that you want them to pass. So thank y'all for tuning in. Hope y'all being safe. Hope y'all, you know, it's March now. I don't know, you know, the year's just flying by, but hope y'all been having a good start to y'all year. Y'all been getting y'all content creators. Y'all been creating y'all content. And y'all, please diversify your skill sets. And, you know, don't just rely too heavily on just the one one job itself, because as we've seen, these last men coming up. But y'all be safe out there. Y'all be blessed. Until the next time, PGD TV, out.